Hello friends, in this video, I will talk about independent samples t-test using R. So we will see how we can apply independent samples t-test in R. So to understand this, firstly, I'll explain you what is independent samples t-test. So, so this test is also known as two samples t-test and it is also known as students t-test. It is generally a inferential statistical test or it is a parametric test because with the help of sample, we are trying to conclude about the population parameters. So this test helps us to determine whether there is a statistically significant difference between the means of two unrelated groups. Now question comes, what is unrelated groups? So unrelated groups meaning is the groups which are unpaired or independent to each other. For example, if I want to compare the marks of male and female students, so in that case, I can say that there are two groups. One group is of males and second group of females and both the groups are independent because the member of one group cannot be the part of other group. So that is why I can say these two groups are unpaired groups or independent groups. Now, in my previous video also, I have told you when I was discussing one sample t-test that for each and every test, there are generally certain assumptions. So in statistics, for independent samples t-test also, we have certain assumptions. The first one is, there should be firstly two variables. First variable is independent variable and it should be categorical in nature. That means it should be measured on nominal scale or on ordinal scale. So in independent variable, there should be two groups. But if you have more than two groups in the independent variable, so you need to decide upon in which two groups you want to find the main difference with the help of independent samples t-test because independent samples t-test can measure the mean difference only in two groups. Second assumption is the dependent variable should be continuous in nature. Then there is independence of observations. That is, there is no connection between the observations in the two groups. So it is possible when we are keeping the one respondent in one group only. So this way we can achieve this assumption. Next one is the dependent variable should be normally distributed in both the groups. Next, the dependent variable has no significant outliers in either groups. Lastly, the variances of dependent variable in two groups are equal. That is, we should have homogeneity of variances between the groups. So friends, this way, these are the assumptions of independent samples t-test, which we need to check before applying this particular test. Now, say for example, as I said, independent variable, independent variable, we should have these two variables. So dependent variable should be continuous and independent variable should be categorical with two labels. So say for example, there is a independent variable gender and we are taking two labels in this that is male and female. Other example, for example, I have an occupation variable which is independent in nature and in this I have only two categories business class people and service class people. So this way I can say that this variable is independent and it has two categories or labels. So that is why I can go for the independent samples t-test. Now talking about the normality test. So to check the normality of our dependent variable, we can use Shapiro-Wilkes test. So hypothesis for this test is the variable is normally distributed. Alternatively, I can say variable is not normally distributed. Now to check the homogeneity of variances between the groups, we can use Levin's test. And for this particular test, the hypothesis, null hypothesis is the variance is equal among the two groups. Alternatively, we can say that variance is not equal among the two groups. So to apply this Levin's test in R, we need to use Levin test function. 
This function is available in the car package. So firstly, you need to install car package. Then we need to use library function to bring this particular package in the global environment of R. And with this, we can use live and test function. So here you can see the syntax for live and test is we need to give the formula and the data set. So data set is the optional. Here you can see formula meaning is you need to give the values and then you need to use tilde sign and then we can pass the groups. So here other way around I can say firstly I need to write the name of my dependent variable tilde sign and then I need to write the name of my independent variable. Then data set means if I'm using any data frame so I need to specify the name of that data frame here. So this way we can apply Levin's test. So friends now I'll move towards to the R studio to tell you how we can apply independent samples t-test and how we can check the assumptions of this test. So friends, I will tell you here independent samples t-test. Firstly, I am writing my null hypothesis. So for example, I am taking my null hypothesis as there is no significant difference in the mean marks of male and female students. So in this hypothesis, firstly, we'll see that I have two variables. First is dependent variable and it is marks. So marks is the continuous scale variable. Second variable we have is the independent variable and this I can take as gender with two levels that is male and female and I can say that this is a categorical variable. So First assumption we have checked by looking at our hypothesis that which two variables we have and what is the scale of these two variables. Further third assumption is we need to check this thing that the observation should be independent to each other. So as we have two labels male and female. So we have to be make sure this thing that one respondent will be the part of one group. That means the male student will be the part of male group and female student will be the part of female group. That way we would be able to maintain or achieve this assumption of independent samples t-test. Further, we need to check the normality, outliers and equality of variances. So friends, to get this, firstly we need to create the variables here. So for example, I'm creating a gender vector here using C function. So I have created the gender variable here. I am pressing control enter to execute this variable in R. So you can see in console it is executed and I'm not getting any error. Second variable I'm creating for marks. So now I have created second variable. I am pressing control enter. Again, it is successfully executed. I'm getting no error. Now, as the assumption, the very first assumption is we have the two variables. One dependent, one independent, one should be continuous variable. Second should be the categorical variable. As I have already written here that DV variable is the marks, which is continuous scale variable and gender is a categorical variable. In R, to make any variable as a categorical variable, we can use the vector function. But here we have created a vector for gender variable using C function. So firstly, I'll check whether this gender vector is a categorical or vector variable or not. So I have written here is dot vector function inside that I have passed the name of my vector. I am pressing control enter and in the console we can see that we are getting false. That means R is communicating to us that gender is not a vector. So what we can do, we can convert it into the vector using vector function. And again, I am storing the vector 
of gender in the gender variable only i am pressing control enter you can see i am not getting any error now i am checking whether the gender is converted into factor or not using is dot factor so we can see now I, we are getting true so this way we have converted the gender vector into factor now when i want to see the output of gender you can find here that we are able to see all the elements of my gender factor along with the labels so it is showing us now it has converted into the categorical variable further to check the normality of my variable marks i am using shapiro dot test function here i am passing the name of my variable or vector that is marks pressing control enter it is showing us could not find shapiro dot test function so the reason is i have not written the name of my function correctly i need to use shapiro now i am pressing control enter and this way you can see in the console we are getting the results of shapiro dot test and it is showing us that the w because Shapiro will test values represented by w and it is 0.91741. Its p value is 0.3359, which is greater than 0 0.05. So here I can conclude this thing that p is greater than 0 0.05. Hence, we are failed to reject h0 and remember when i was discussing the conceptual part of independent samples t test i have shown you that the hypothesis for shapiro dot test is variable is normally distributed so friends with this conclusion we can say this thing that our variable is following the normal distribution now we can move further to check the equality of variances between the two groups so to check that we need to firstly install the car package so after using this particular line we can press control enter and then the process of installing of this package will begin by the r make sure the internet connection should be there with the device after installing this we need to use library function to bring this particular package in the global environment of r now i am using live in test function and here i need to pass the name of my dependent variable tilt sign and the name of my independent variable i am pressing control enter so this way you can see in console we are getting the output here the value of p is greater than 0 0.05. So I can make interpretation here that the live and test p value is greater than 0 0.05. Hence we fail to reject null hypothesis. And for live and test the null hypothesis is that the variances are equal among the groups we can again conclude that homogeneity of variances is maintained between the groups so this way the next assumption is also followed by the data now lastly we need to check the outliers or significant outliers in the dependent variable with respect to the groups of independent variable so here i can use box plot function inside that i need to pass the name of my dependent variable till sign and then i can pass the name of my independent variable then i can press control enter to generate the output and this way you can see in the fourth window that we are not getting any outliers in the box plot for my marks variable with respect to the male and female students. So this way we can conclude all the assumptions of t-test 
have been met by the data. So that means data is all set for applying independent sample status. So now we'll see what is the syntax of t-test or independent samples t-test. So firstly, you need to pass the name of your dependent variable, till sign, then independent variable. Then you need to pass variance. Then you need to give alpha value and then you need to write alternative. So we can see here that dv is the continuous scale variable, iv is the categorical scale variable. In v, we need to pass logical value, true or false. So as assumption of homogeneity of variances is achieved by the data, so here we need to pass true. Alpha is the significant level value or the level of significance. It can be 5%, so that you need to pass on here. And in alternative, we need to say this thing to R that whether we want to test a two-tailed hypothesis or one-tailed hypothesis. If we want to apply two-tailed hypothesis, we need to write two dot psi date or for one-tailed hypothesis, we can write less or greater. So this way, these are the certain parameters which we need to pass to get the value of independent samples t-test. So here, the main parameter which we need to pass is the first one. Remaining are the alternative or the optional parameters in R. So with this, we are applying t dot test, then marks till, then gender, then v equals true, then alpha equals 0 0.05, then alternative equals in double quotation, two dot side date. And then we can press control enter to get the output of independent sample status. So here you can see we are getting the output. The T value is 6.6246 for the eight degrees of freedom. P value is less than 0 0.05. So with this, we can conclude that the P value is less than 0 0.05. That means we are unable to accept the null hypothesis. And that is why we are going with the alternative hypothesis. So that way we can conclude that there is a significant difference in the mean marks of male and female students. Talking about the confidence level, or confidence interval at 95%, it is 6.258283 to 12.941717. So that means if we will pick some other sample from the same population, so the mean values will fall between this range. And if we want to say as our null hypothesis is rejected and we are concluding that there is a significant difference. So if we want to say for which group the mean is more, using the last two values, we can conclude this thing. For female group, the mean is 43.4 and for male group, the mean is 33.8. So that is why we can conclude that the mean marks for female students are greater than to the mean marks of male students. So friends, this way we can use independent samples t-test in R. I hope you have understood the process of testing the assumptions and how you can apply independent samples t-test in R. So thank you so much for watching this video. Stay connected for more such videos in R. Thank you.